Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Fikrnaut.com. Now Fikrnaut from studies. So today we are going to be talking about fire extinguishers. Previously we talked about carbon dioxide. How carbon dioxide does not support combustion, neither is combustible. And um, it basically is, uh, since it's heavier than air, it cuts off the supply of oxygen in the air, right? Because it insulates the burning substance. So we talked about all of this. Basically, something related to a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher are substances that extinguish the fire. As in, if there is a fire somewhere, it removes the fire completely. I think you all agree with me on that, right? And a fire extinguisher is a device that is used to extinguish fire. fire. And carbon dioxide is used in this device to put off fire because again, it does not suppose support combustion, neither is it combustible. So the common types of fire extinguishers are three foam type fire extinguishers, soda acid fire extinguishers and liquid carbon dioxide fire extinguishers. So we're going to go through all of these fire extinguishers and see how basically this whole thing of fire extinguishers. How is carbon dioxide actually used in these fire extinguishers? Basically, we're going to go in depth and in detail. So the first uh, one that we are going to be talking about is the foam type fire extinguishers. So the foam type fire extinguisher, as you can see over here in this picture, consists of a metallic cylinder having a knob and a nozzle tube. The metallic cylinder is filled with a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate. So as you can see over here, it, there is a little diagram which is well drawn by the publisher of course. And you can see that it has a knob right here. Right here, there is a knob. And along with that, there is a nozzle tube, this one. This is a nozzle tube. I'm going to write NT. And the metallic cylinder comes with a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate. So over here, there's, there's this metallic cylinder. As you can see, it has a shine as well. It has something called sodium bicarbonate. I think you all know sodium bicarbonate, right? NaHCO3 right? Or you can say Na2HCO3, right? So this is sodium bicarbonate, of course. So sodium bicarbonate. So a glass bottle containing aluminum uh, sulfate is kept inside the metallic cylinder. So look at the difference over here. The metallic cylinder is filled with a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate, but the aluminum sulfate is inside the metallic cylinder. As you can see over here, there's a little bottle over here of metallic, uh, sorry, aluminum sulfate, of course, inside the metallic cylinder. And when we strike the knob of the extinguisher against the hard surface, the knob, when this is striked against a hard surface, that means when this is broken off, the glass bottle breaks. First thing. So the glass bottle breaks and Aluminum sulfate comes in contact with sodium bicarbonate because as you can see over here, whoever has made this design is very, 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 very smart. So they have separated the aluminum sulfate in this bottle, glass bottle over here with the sodium bicarbonate which is present in this metallic, metallic cylinder. So it is completely separated, isn't it? And even though it is separated. So what happens is, whenever a fire does come, this knob is broken. And whenever this is broken, the sodium sulfate, so the glass bottle breaks first of all, and this sodium sulfate comes in contact with sodium bicarbonate. So imagine the chemical formula that might or that may have taken place along with that. So sodium sulfate we know is ALSO4. And sodium bicarbonate is NaCO3. So let's look at this uh, reaction over here. Na 
H C O three plus A L two S O four. The whole uh, the whole thrice actually, yeah. So what happens is now tell me what will be the products that may come out of this reaction. So they actually react to produce carbon dioxide gas and aluminium hydroxide. So CO two is one gas that we know will come out of this reaction. Okay, or let's take a ready reaction which is also written down over here. So things get easier for us. So yeah, so this is the reaction NaHCO three plus Al two SO four. So we heard so. Uh, Uh, CO two is produced, so we cut this off. CO two is produced. Plus, I think we know two uh, Al OH the whole thrice plus uh, Na two SO four. Now Na two SO four is produced because Na and SO four is left, so it's it's Na two SO four. Now time to balance it. Let me write this down properly. Carbon dioxide first gas, Na two SO four, and we know um, aluminium hydroxide is there. So Al two, right? Al two. So no, two won't be there. Al OH the whole thrice. Fine. So now let's balance it. As you can see over here, Na is so cut this six off. Let's not take the six over here. Fine. So NaHCO three. So over here, oxygen is three. Over here, oxygen is six. Oxygen is six over here. Hmm. Four, five, six. Actually, no, no, not even six. Six, seven, eight, nine. Six, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Well, well. Uh, let's leave out the oxygen for once. Okay. So as you can see here, which is two. So we are two over here. Hmm. So when we add two over here, oxygen becomes three twos are six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So oxygen becomes twelve. While over here, oxygen is four. So over here, what we do is we'll add. Um, let's add three over here. Not even three. Actually, let's add. Uh, hmm. What do we add? Six. We'll add six over here, and this is four and three. So when we when we add six over here, that means we'll add three over here. So three twos are becomes six. Four threes are becomes twelve because over here, as you can see, sulfate is four threes. That's twelve becomes twelve, and CO two three plus three Na two SO four plus two OH three and six, and it becomes six CO two. Perfect. So this is the total balanced reaction. So at the start, it may look a little confusing, but when you balance it, it will become perfect. So the final reaction balanced, the balanced version would be six um, Na HCO three plus Al two CO four the whole thrice three, which gives three Na two. SO four plus two Al uh, OH the whole thrice, which is a precipitate. That's why the arrow is downwards like this, and a six CO two, which is an upward arrow, which means it's a gas. I think we all know this, right? Carbon dioxide is a gas. It has to be a gas. So this was the reaction. Now let's read from here. A substance called a uh, saponin is added to the sodium bicarbonate solution. The sodium bicarbonate is present inside the uh, metallic. Cylinder, right? So the sodium bicarbonate that is present, it produces a foam of carbon dioxide. So it's like a foam-like substance. It's not exactly gas, and the foam of carbon dioxide comes out through the nozzle that is directed towards the fire. This type of fire extinguisher is used to extinguish uh, extinguisher fires uh, caused by petrol and kerosene. Specifically, because it may um, extinguish or fi extinguish fire. I keep saying extinguisher. I'm extremely sorry. It is used to extinguish fire better in uh, for petrol or kerosene, etc. Of course, right? So that is why it is used in that. So a substance called again saponin is added to the sodium bicarbonate that. Makes or that produces a foam of carbon dioxide. So that is why it is known as a foam type fire extinguisher. Perfect. Now, just for revision, um, one thing is there. There is a knob. There is a nozzle tube, 
present and the metallic cylinder is filled with a uh, saturated uh, a solution of sodium uh, bicarbonate and uh, the inside the metallic uh, cylinder there is sodium um, sorry aluminum sulfate and when fire is there the knob is broken the glass bottle is broken the aluminum sulfate it reacts with uh, of course sodium bicarbonate which creates NaHCO3 plus Al2SO4 the whole th or the whole thrice so it gives uh, aluminium hydroxide it gives sodium sulfate and it also gives out carbon dioxide of course and a substance called uh, saponin is added in the sodium bicarbonate solution that creates a foam like substance and this uh, fire extinguisher is used to extinguish kerosene and petrol fires basically uh, any diesel right now soda acid fire extinguishers a soda acid fire extingu extinguisher consists of a container filled with sodium bicarbonate solution so a sealed glass bottle containing sulfuric acid present inside the container so this is what a soda acid fire extinguisher consists of and this is what it is like the composition of it so again a soda acid fire extinguisher consists of a container filled with a sodium bicarbonate solution similar as the foam type fire extinguisher and in this case again inside the metallic cylinder there is the so i'm going to zoom into this picture yeah so again inside this you have the sodium bicarbonate inside this metallic cylinder and inside this glass bottle sulfuric acid is present inside it inside the container basically so what happens is oops i'm extremely sorry <laughs> this has this hasn't happened the first time but i'll make sure and never mind so when the extinguisher is to be used the glass bottle containing the acid is broken by striking the knob as a result sodium bicarbonate and sulfuric acid come in contact so same same thing which happened in the foam type fire extinguisher so the knob is broken the um, glass bottle is broken and the acid basically comes in contact with the sodium bicarbonate and uh, they react vigorously to form a carbon uh, to form carbon dioxide and the gas rushes out through the nozzle again so some this is literally the same thing only sulfuric acid is used over here so the reaction looks like sulfuric acid i think we all know it's h2so4 so over here what happens is nahco3 plus h2so4 let's do this i think we have done this before we have done this if you remember when we were studying about carbon dioxide we were studying about how bicarbonates come in um, reaction with acids dilute acids so we have done this reaction before but there's only one thing we are using nahco3 plus h2so4 before it was hcl so let's do this in the form of h2so4 now this will be a new thing but hey we always learn right i'm not taking two because it's just uh, balanced that's why it's written like so okay so one thing we know that there is h2 so there is going to be water over here water will be produced that is a common thing that will come so h2 o h2 this is gone completely and so is this okay this is completely gone so h2 o is there plus co2 is there then what's left this nah is left and so4 is left so what will happen now now you only tell me what will happen na 2 so4 will react because h you can't add it in here definitely so as you can see this is the complete reaction and one thing that has happened let me cut all of this just imagine this the hydrogen is still there or i'll write it down again h2 okay so over here there are three hydrogen atoms while in the reactant side there is only two so we add what do we do we make it balanced and to make it balanced we add 2 over here when we add 2 over here it becomes 4 therefore we add 2 over here as well now what what happens 
plus 2 becomes 4 so it's balanced now over here 2 plus uh, 2 plus 2 becomes 4 again 4 over here as well so 2H2O and we write 2CO2 as well to make it balanced and yes that will be our reaction so as carbon dioxide is directed towards the fire it spreads over the fire and cuts off the supply of air uh, forming a layer uh, of, of on the fire and thus the fire extinguishes extinguishes again so the what happens is the carbon dioxide as the nozzle tube out of the nozzle tube the sodium bicarbonate it is released again the saponin is there fine so it is uh, released and um, what happens is it spreads over the fire and it cuts off the supply of air and it forms a layer on top of the fire so it extinguishes the f uh, extinguishes the fire so one thing that you have to know that there is a whole fire cycle for a fire to come we need oxygen we need heat and we need fuel so we need oxygen which i'm writing is o2 over here we need heat and we need fuel so if one of them is gone let's say fuel is gone or let's say oxygen is gone or let's say heat is gone the fire will be extinguished so this is what carbon dioxide does it extinguishes one of these substances therefore the fire gets extinguished and since carbon dioxide is heavier than air it cuts off the supply of oxygen so oxygen is gone completely from here so the fire cycle is empty and thus all of this goes understood so now with this we come to an end of foam type and soda acid fire extinguishers now let's go on to the liquid carbon dioxide fire extinguisher so how is uh, fire extinguished by a liquid type of carbon dioxide fire extinguisher so in a liquid carbon dioxide uh, fire extinguisher carbon dioxide is stored in a steel cylinder under high pressure and when we open the valve of the cylinder the pressure reduces and liquid carbon dioxide changes into white snow dry ice so over here let me zoom into this picture again yes so as you can see this is a liquid carbon dioxide fire extinguisher something that we see a lot commonly so in a liquid carbon dioxide fire extinguisher carbon dioxide is stored in a steel container so this is different from the other two so again liquid liquefied carbon dioxide okay carbon dioxide is stored in a steel container under high high pressure and we know when high pressure is applied carbon dioxide changes into liquid right so when we open the valve of the cylinder the pressure reduces the liquid carbon dioxide and changes it into snow dry ice it is used to extinguish a, extinguish both oil fed fires and electrical fires both soda acid and foam type fire extinguishers cannot be used to put off electrical fire it is because in these fire extinguishers water is also produced along with carbon dioxide water conducts electricity and may cause an electrical shock so one reason if they ask you why cannot electrical uh, why cannot an electrical fire be put out by foam type or soda acid fire extinguishers well that is solely and only and only because they have water in them they have h2o which is also produced and when h2o is produced you know what happens water conducts electricity so the person who is uh, spraying this basic type of extinguisher they will get current which will just make it worse so again i'm repeating what happens in this extinguisher um, carbon dioxide is stored in a steel cylinder under high pressure when it is opened or when we open the valve of the cylinder the pressure reduces and liquid carbon dioxide changes into snow or dry ice i know it's a little confusing so that is why i'll make a little cycle in, uh, for this as well so carbon co2 under high pressure which i'm writing as hp over here changes into liquid co2 now this liquid co2 when opened when open w o when opened pressure reduces and when this pressure reduces 
what happens it changes into dry ice and it is used to extinguish both oil fed fires and electrical fires perfect now with this we come to an end of fire extinguishers as well fire extinguishers uh, as a whole uh, we have done with uh, we are done with foam type fire extinguishers we done with soda type fire extinguishers and we're also done by with the um, liquid carbon dioxide fire extinguishers now we are going to talk about the carbon cycle how the addition of carbon uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere affects human beings animals and plants and also the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere uh, in the next class we will be dealing with uh, the greenhouse effect and global warming and also carbon dioxide uh, carbon monoxide actually and with after that we'll be basically done with the chapter after so many videos we'll be done perfect so let's start with the carbon cycle first to start off with so the carbon cycle talks about the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh it and it is about 0.03% and we learned that right in atmosphere it is about 0.03% and it remains balanced through the carbon cycle carbon dioxide is introduced uh, in atmosphere and consumed continuously thus the addition of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is balanced by its removal so if we take out or if we produce carbon dioxide from our body the plants take it in so it is completely balanced and that is why this carbon cycle is works perfectly with our community or with or with the world and we're going to talk about how this cycle is completely balanced and how we don't end up of such we don't end up of uh, or end up dying of suffocation because there is too much of carbon dioxide so the addition of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere comes by the respiration of human beings i think you all know that um, animals and plants of course by the decay of dead plants and animals it changes into carbon dioxide um, by com uh, combustion of fuels because fuels like if coke uh, takes uh, combines with uh, oxygen it turns into carbon dioxide right if volcanic eruptions take place carbon dioxide is produced if sea water when percentage of carbon dioxide increases in water right that is that is how that is how also addition of carbon dioxide takes place by industries because of the smoke that comes out so carbon dioxide can come in our lives in many many different ways but the beauty of it all is that it is balanced so how does carbon dioxide gets uh, get removed from our environment even though by the sea water or by us by the decay of dead plants by the combustion of fuels by industries by volcanic eruptions even if carbon dioxide comes in the atmosphere how is it removed so one uh, th there are two removal ways of carbon dioxide and first is by photosynthesis definitely and by second is by uh, the dissolution of uh, carbon dioxide in water from atmosphere so what happens is carbon dioxide is soluble in water of course so from the atmosphere it dissolutes solutes or uh, what happens is by the dissolution of uh, co2 that's carbon dioxide in water uh, carbon dioxide reduces from the atmosphere and uh, it's all balanced so we're going to look at this little cycle over here on how carbon dioxide comes and how it is removed as well so animals create carbon dioxide plants animals fossil fuels all of them create carbon dioxide right um, animals feed on plants of course right they feed on plants and carbon dioxide in air comes fossil fuels burn carbon dioxide in air plants respiration carbon dioxide in air but this gets used in the photosynthesis as well that is why you can see there are two arrows over here one arrow here one arrow here burning takes place from here respiration takes place from here feeding and carbon dioxide and plants decay into fossil fuels and then it burns to go to carbon dioxide and also plants also decompose into fossil fuels so basically you can say it all starts with if we take plants over here animal fields feed on feed on plants animal also decay into fossil fuels and they also directly take carbon dioxide for respiration or they release carbon dioxide fossil fuels also come in handy over here and they burn 
plants also decompose into fossil fuels and fossil fuels also burn plants give out a uh, carbon dioxide as their respiration and photosynthesis also takes place in carbon dioxide uh, sorry in plants so this whole carbon cycle you know it's such a beautiful cycle that it balances out everything everything in our environment in this world every single thing and that's what's that's what the that's what's the beauty of it all you know even though carbon dioxide comes in many different ways it gets balanced out properly the good advantages of carbon dioxide in the next class i will show you some disadvantages that may come um, in the case or in the way of carbon dioxide that makes it the bad guy also so we'll look at those and for now that's it from me to you today uh, i hope you enjoyed uh, the lesson and uh, really understood about the fire extinguishers and the carbon cycle of course i'll see you guys next time bye